What is so fascinating about space? Just how little we know about it. I think that's one of the amazing things and how much there is to do in it. It's, I would say it's, a, if I were an artist, I would call it a blank canvas. Initially, I, I wanted to know a lot about just the airflow around it. I thought that interested me. But I, I discovered that not the pure airflow around it interested me the most, but more or less like how does everything interact with each other. It's the ingenuity of some things. Um, and I think an easy example of this is, for example, that they had a fighter jet, the, the F-35, where they created a helmet which allowed you to see through the aircraft. What were your expectations on the first day of your study? Ooh, that is a very good question. I don't know what I expected, but it definitely probably wasn't what there was, um, what I encountered afterwards. The view I had was relatively realistic, I would say, which was a lot of theory, a lot of studying, but I, I enjoyed it very much. What is typical for aerospace engineering? I would say one of the biggest thing you recognize is people that are driven. And I want to give an example, group projects. Um, people are very passionate because you do not choose a challenging study like this if you're not very passionate about it. Also, people help each other a lot, but you do need to ask for it. Because what I have, I see as well a lot is people like myself, sometimes thinking everybody here is so good, um, then I don't want to ask for help because, well, I feel that they would think I'm not as small or something. Is it easy really to get to know other people here? At first, it seems a bit, a bit scary to get to know new people because you don't know what to expect and it's nicer to keep in your own environment. But when you know people a little bit better and when you always, when you made some friends, and you can go together and, and it makes you feel less anxious and just enjoy it. First, I had to find my friend group, but now uh, during the master, I've, I found a very an amazing friend group. And I think the beautiful thing about our space is that I've not only friends from my year, but friends from uh, the bachelors, I have friends from other masters, I have friends from all around the faculties, I have friends from other faculties as well. The trade off between studying and doing things outside of your study is, is often a bit difficult. And something I've noticed very often is when you're working with, in a team with other people outside of your study, and you have to choose between studying for an exam that only you are affected by, or working on your action points or some deadlines for something that other people, other people are involved with, it'll always go gear towards what other people are involved with. And what I noticed in my second year is that a lot of the courses I then didn't take or didn't do were because I felt like it's easier to make sacrifices myself than to make sacrifices for a team. And that's, I think, a very constant thing. Sacrificing your lectures, for example, to work on a group project is very acceptable, but sacrificing your group project to work on lectures is really not accepted. Why is it difficult to ask for help? I think it's a human thing. Something inside of us just compares us, our brain compares us to everyone around us. Sometimes it just makes us think that if other people knew we don't know, then they wouldn't want to hang out with us, which is complete and other BS to say it like that. But I think it's just almost something natural about humans that we compare ourselves and, and maybe as well about being in your 20s. I think being in your 20s is a, uh, could be a whole series, just uh, the mistakes you, you make and the experience you yeah, make up during those years. And these are all the lessons I think you have to learn. Learning that you're just as good as anyone else. Failure it happens to everybody. And it's, it's, if it hasn't happened yet, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen at some point. And knowing how to deal with it, or at least dealing with it properly and making sure it doesn't impact you too much, is the most important thing. Because you're going everybody's gonna feel like they feel sometimes. I personally took four years for my bachelor, although it's a three year bachelor because, well, at some point I of course failed some courses, but as well the workload was very high. And at first I thought, well, I failed, I won't do my bachelor's in three years. But then I realized, and I talked to my, my mom, my friends as well a lot, and I realized that it might even be rather a step forward if I take four years, because I will be able to not only study, I will be able to partake in other things. Have there been moments where you really hit the wall and found out, whoa, this is difficult? Um, I think that there was one second year course. I think I, I hit the wall in that regard that I 
decided in my second year or when I already had some delays to postpone it to my third or fourth year. But then in my fourth year, I really studied hard for it and even got lower than I got the, the year before. And I was like, how does this happen? So what is the key lesson learned from this? We always think that we have to finish the bachelor's, we have to finish the master's, we have to start working, we have to finish this, finish that, find the new job. But in the end, I think studying is one of the biggest privileges that we have. You don't have a nine to five yet. You can wake up at 10 if you really want to. You can wake up at two if you really want to. And I think having that a year longer was, in the end, is one of the best, best decisions of my life. But it, it, at the beginning, it felt like a big failure. Could you please describe the moment that you get into the plane at the end of your bachelor? How does it feel like? You really understand what also a cool piece of engineering aircraft is. And you really understand that what you studied for really applies to, to the real world. And that's not letters on paper. 